The BFG by Roald Dahl, pictures by Quentin Blake. Journey to Dream Country. After the mad frobscottle party was over, Sophie settled herself again on top of the enormous table. You is feeling better now? asked the BFG. Much better, thank you, Sophie said. Whenever I is feeling a bit scrotty, the BFG said, a few gollops of frobscottle is always making me hopscotchy again. I must say, it's quite an experience, Sophie said. It's a rat's whistler, the BFG said. It's glumptious. He turned away and strode across the cave and picked up his dream-catching net. I is galloping off now, he said, to catch some more wopsy whiffling dreams for my collection. I is doing this every day without missing. Is you wishing to come with me? Not me, thank you very much, Sophie said. Not with those other giants lurking outside. I is snuggling you very cozy into the pocket of my vest, the BFG said. Then no one is seeing you. <clears throat> Before Sophie could protest, he had picked her up off the table and popped her into the vest pocket. There was plenty of room in there. Is you wishing for a little hole to peep out from? He asked her. There's one here already, she said. She had found a small hole in the pocket, and when she put one eye close to it, she could see out very well indeed. She watched the BFG as he bent down and filled his suitcase with empty glass jars. He closed the lid, picked up the suitcase in one hand, took the pole with the net on the other in the other hand, and marched toward the entrance of the cave. As soon as he was outside, the BFG was set off across the great, great hot yellow wasteland where the blue rocks lay and the dead trees stood and where all the other giants were skulking about. Sophie, squatting low on her heels in the pocket of the leather vest, had one eye glow, glued to the little hole. She saw the group of enormous giants about 300 yards away, ahead. Hold your breaths, the BFG whispered down to her. Cross your figlers. Here we goes. We is going right past all these other giants. Is you seeing that great whopping big one, the one nearest to us? I see him, Sophie whispered back, quivering. That is the horriblest of them all and the biggest of them all. He is called the flesh lump eating giant. I don't want to hear about him, Sophie said. He is 54 feet high, the BFG said softly as he jogged along. And he is swalloping human beings like they is sugar lumps, two or three at a time. You're making me nervous, Sophie said. I is nervous myself, the BFG whispered. I always get as jumpsy as a jog hopper when the flesh lump eating giant is around. Keep away from him. Sophie pleaded. Not possible, the BFG answered. He is galloping easily, two times as quicksy as me. Shall we turn back, Sophie said. Turning back is worse, the BFG said. If they is seeing me running away, they is all giving chase and throwing rocks. They would never eat you, though, would they? Sophie asked. Giants is never guzzling other giants, the BFG said. They is fighting and squarreling a lot with each other, but never guzzling. Human beings is more tasty to them. The giants had already spotted the BFG, and all heads were turned, watching him as he jogged forward. He was aiming to pass well to the right of the group. Through her little peephole, Sophie thought, saw the flesh-lump-eating giant moving over to interrupt them. He didn't hurry. He just loped over casually to a point where the BFG would have to pass. The others loped after him. Sophie counted nine of them altogether, and she recognized the blood bottler in the middle of them. They were bored. They had nothing to do until nightfall. There was an air of menace about them as they loped slowly across the plain with long, lolloping strides heading for the BFG. Here comes the runty one, boomed the flesh lump eater. Ho, ho there, runty one. Where is you splatch winkling away to in such a hefty hurry? He shot out an enormous arm and grabbed the BFG by the hair. The BFG didn't struggle. He simply stopped and stood quite still and said, B 
be so kind as to be letting go of my hair, Flesh Lump Eater. The Flesh Lump Eater released him and stepped back a step. The other giants stood around, waiting for the fun to start. Now then, you little grub squiffler, boomed the bee at the Flesh Lump Eater. We as all of us wanting to know where you is galloping off to every day in the daytime. Nobody ought to be galloping off to anywhere until it is getting dark. The human beings could easily be spotting you and starting a giant hunt. And we is not wanting that to happen, is we not? We is not, shouted the other giants. Go back to your cave, runty one. I is not galloping to any human bean country, the BFG said. I is going to the other places. I is thinking, said the flesh lump eater, that you is catching human beings and keeping them as pets. Right you is, cried the blood battler. Just now I is hearing him chittering away to one of them in his cave. You is welcome to go and search my cave from frack to bunt, the BFG answered. You can go looking into every crook and nanny. There is no human beans or stringy beans or runner beans or jelly beans or any other beans in there. Sophie crouched still as a mouse inside the BFG's pocket. She hardly dared breathe. She was terrified she might sneeze. The slightest sound or movement would give her away. Through the tiny peephole, she watched the giants clustering around the poor BFG. How revolting they were. All of them had piggy little eyes and enormous mouths. When the flesh lump eater was speaking, she got a look, a glimpse of his tongue. It was jet black, like a slab of black steak. Every one of them was more than twice as tall as the BFG. Suddenly, the flesh lump eater shot out two enormous hands and grabbed the BFG around the waist. He tossed him high in the air and shouted, Catch him, man hugger. The man hugger, man hugger caught him. The other giants spread out quickly in a large circle, each giant about 20 yards from his neighbor, preparing for the game they were going to play. Now the man hugger threw the BFG high and far, shouting, Catch him, bone cruncher! The bone cruncher ran forward and caught the tumbling BFG and immediately swung him up again. Catch him, child chewer! he shouted. And so it went on. The giants were playing ball with the BFG, vying with each other to see who could throw him the highest. Sophie dug her nails into the sides of the pocket, trying to prevent herself from tumbling out when she was upside down. She felt as though she were in a barrel going over Niagara Falls. And all the time there was the fearful danger that one of the giants would not catch the BFG and he would go crashing to the ground. Catch him, meat dripper! Catch him, gizzard gulper. Catch him, maid masher. Catch him, blood bottler. Catch him, catch him, catch him. In the end, they got bored with this game. They dumped the poor BFG on the ground. He was dazed and shattered. They gave him a few kicks and shouted, Run, you little runt. Let us be seeing how fast you is galloping. The BFG ran. What else could he do? The giants picked up rocks and hurled them after him. He managed to, managed to dodge them. Ruddy little runt, they shouted. Troggy little twit. Shriveling little shrimp. Mucky little midget. Squaggy little squib. Grobby little grub. At last, the BFG got clear of them all, and in another couple of minutes, the pack of giants was out of sight over the horizon. Sophie popped her head up from the pocket. I didn't like that, she said. Phew, said the BFG. Few and far between. They was in a nasty crouching mood today, was they not? I is 